Hi guys, welcome to Jam Online, another session. Um, this week we are on part four of God's story um, and last week we left Adam and Eve and Woody in pretty dire situations. Um, Adam and Eve have been separated from God, they've been banished from the Garden of Eden and Woody had been separated from all of his toy friends, the, from Buzz Lightyear and his friends, and also from his boy owner, Andy, um, and he was in Al's toy barn. And I promised you that in the next couple of weeks we would look at the rescue plan, um, which we will do, and next week we're going to look on, we're going to think about being rescued. Um, so don't worry, it all comes good in the end for Woody and for us. Um, but before we do, we just need to pause and think about why God came up with a rescue plan. Why would Andy have come up with a rescue plan for Woody? Why didn't he just accept that his toy was lost? Why would Woody want to be rescued? Why would Adam and Eve want to get back into the Garden of Eden? Why would they just decide, oh well, okay, we're banished, we'll start our own new life. And God could have looked at Adam and Eve and thought, well, they clearly were broken, they were no good, they were rubbish, my creations weren't any good. Let's just leave them out there. Well, that's not the way God thought. God created Adam and Eve, it tells us in Genesis, in his image. A couple of weeks ago when I read the very beginning creation story, we heard, we heard those words. God created them in his image. Male and female, he created them. He took them from the earth and he lovingly put them together into human beings. He created them out of nothing. And he loved them so much that he wanted to put a plan in place to rescue them. And if we think about Woody, Woody's story, when Woody was abducted, he thinks he's no good. He thinks that he isn't wanted anymore by anyone. He doesn't realise that it was a mistake that he was put in the garage sale. But then when he's out, he sees a video which shows him that he's actually a priceless toy. He is very valuable. We are so valuable too. And we need to hear that, that somebody, we are so valuable that somebody actually died for us. Jesus, the Son of God, died for us. But then in Woody's story, he realises he's a valuable toy, but he realises something else. Woody looks at his foot and he sees Andy's signature written on his foot. So he realises that not only is he very valuable as a toy, he actually belongs. and He belongs to Andy. And that's something that we need to understand too. We're valuable and we belong. We belong to God. Adam and Eve were lovingly created by God and he, they were valuable to him and they belonged to him. And it hurt him just as much to banish them, if not more, than it hurt them. So last week I told you a story about me getting lost at the fireworks when I was a little child. But now this week I can tell you a story about, as an adult, I'm older now and I'm a parent myself, as many of you know, and um, I've also experienced a child getting lost from the parent perspective. When my daughter was very little, um, I remember being in the supermarket and I had a basket in my hand and she was she was old enough she could walk by herself a little bit so she's sort of holding my hand and I stopped to put something off the shelf into my basket and when I did I let go of her hand and she ran off down the supermarket aisle. She thought it was funny, it was a great game to run off. Well, look at this big long pathway that I can run on. Um, and to start off with I sort of laughed, oh, she's run off and I followed after her down the aisle but when I came to the end of the aisle I couldn't see her and I didn't know which way she'd gone. So I turned and went down one aisle, but she wasn't there. And it's, I can tell you from a parent point of view, it is amazingly quick how, how quick the panic sets in. Um, so I started running up and down the rows looking for her. Gosh, where is she? Um, and when I couldn't find her straight away, my heart really began to beat because I was worried for her safety. She was only very little and I thought, somebody else could have taken her. All those thoughts started to race through my, my brain and I, it's, I'm her mother, it's my job to keep her safe. And what can possibly have happened? I didn't think about the fact that she was maybe a bit naughty from running away from me. There was no blame. All I thought about was getting her back safe. 
and I can remember running to the front of the shop and speaking to the security guard in a very panicked way. I said, has a little girl come past you? Where is she? I can't find my I can't find her. Where is she? Where is she? And he said, no, no child had come out of the door in, on their own. Um, and I, he, he quickly helped agree that he would block the doorway while I went and looked for her. And I grabbed as many shop assistants as I could. I went to the customer services and said, help me, help me, I've got to find my child. So when I enlisted the help of a lot of shoppers and a lot of shop assistants, we very quickly found her and she was restored to me. And to be honest, she wasn't even worried. She was quite all right. It was me who was panicked because she didn't really realise the danger that she was in. And I think that for God, when he banished Adam and Eve from the garden, he was very worried about them. And he knew he needed to come up with a plan to rescue them because he loved them so much. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves of just how precious we are to God. Sometimes we listen more to other people than what God's opinion of us is. Sometimes we might think that we're no good like Woody did. We might think that we're a bit worthless. Maybe we aspire to be in the football team and somebody says something mean to us when we're playing a match. They say like, oh, you're no good at football. You'll never be good enough to be picked for the team. Or we get a few questions wrong in maths at school and we think, oh, maybe, and we start to doubt that we're not very good at that. And somebody makes a mean comment and says, maths just isn't your thing. Maybe even a teacher says that to you. And because we value our other people in our lives, people who are important to us, our friends, our teachers, our parents, we believe them and we start to believe them more than we believe the truth. Maybe we look in the mirror and we see the truth that we look okay. Our hair looks not too bad. We look, we, we look, we look all right, but we don't think that we're really very beautiful. And we see an advert on the television and it says that if we buy this skin product, it will make our skin beautiful and soft. Or buy this particular brand of shampoo and it will make your hair look shiny and beautiful. And we start to believe it, that we need those things to make us more beautiful when we don't see the truth that we're beautiful already. And the best place to find the truth I've found is in the Bible. And I'm going to read to you from um, Psalm 139. It says, Lord, you have examined me and you know me. You know everything I do. From far away, you understand all my thoughts. You see me, whether I am working or resting. You know all my actions. Even before I speak, you already know what I will say. You are all around me on every side. You protect me with, my, with your power. Your knowledge of me is too deep. It is beyond my understanding. Where could I go to escape from you? Where could I get away from your presence? If I went up to the heaven, you would be there. If I lay down in the world of the dead, you would be there. If I flew away beyond the east or lived in the farthest place in the west, you would be there to lead me. You would be there to help me. I could ask the darkness to hide me or the light round me to turn into night. But even darkness is not dark for you and the night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You created every part of me. You put me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. When my bones were being formed, carefully put together in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allotted to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever even began. Oh God, how difficult I find your thoughts, how many of them there are. If I counted them, they would be more than the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Wow, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? God knew about us before we were even born. And he still knows about us now. In another part of the Bible, in Isaiah, it says that God has engraved our names on the palm of his hand. Now, why would he do that? Would he? On the, in the story, Andy had written his name on Woody's foot to show ownership, showed that Woody belonged to Andy. So Andy had said, he's mine, I'm putting my name on it. But it doesn't say that God's put his name on our hands, God, so that people know that we belong to him. Instead, he's put our names on his hand. Now, that 
that's a bit strange, is it? It's nothing to do with ownership. And I'll tell you why. Have you ever been to the supermarket or something, or on a little errand, been sent with a with a list of things to get? And you think, how am I going to remember? I've got to get milk, bananas and bread. And you think, oh, I'll never remember. You write them down on a list. Well, sometimes, I wouldn't advise this, but sometimes I have been known to write something that I need to remember on the back of my hand. Um, if I know that I need to pick up some milk on the way home from work, and I think by the end of the day, when I've been at work all day, I might forget, I might just write milk on my hand and it means I won't forget it. And I think that's why God has written our name on his hand, so he will never ever forget us. And he hasn't just written it, it says he's engraved it, that's that way you scratch it in, so it can never ever be removed. Our name is on God's hand. Wow. So it doesn't matter where we go or what we do, God will always find us, he will always love us and he will always remember us. So when we come on next week to look at God's rescue plan for us, we need to remember this week too, that we're important to him because we are made in his image. He loves us so much that he sent his son to die for us and he will never, ever, ever forget us. See you next week.